Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also tells you how bad dental work sucks. Yes, I actually went to the dentist, had to get two fillings, and a root canal redone. That was absolutely no fun, miserable, and I've been paying the price not only on that, but also playing catch up uh, videos because of that. Uh, so I'm back, don't worry if you're not, we're all good, just a mouthful of slightly uncomfortability right now because they were kind of all over the place. But good news is I did get a lot of videos filmed this week. I know I've been a little thin on the reviews and I went nuts this morning. Um, what I do have coming up, like I said, I got a ton of reviews done. I do have uh, some new stuff on the way and I'll probably get an unboxing maybe next week. I was hoping it was going to be here today, but it wasn't. But uh, all that aside, I've got a big show this week, lots of great questions, and one that's another really hot topic. In fact, one this one I've tried to answer two or three times and end up cutting out of the videos. So this is going to be pretty controversial as well, so I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. But enough of me yapping about all that's going to happen. Let's show you what is going to happen in your questions. Arcadic 111 writes, the threads on my gun are completely destroyed and I can't put my suppressor on. How can I fix it? Thanks, love the show, and hi from PA. All right, now this can happen. I've seen it happen a lot, especially if you're trying to take off your orange tip or you forgot to remove the set screw and you're trying to get the metal flash hider off, something like that, you can really screw up your thread. So assuming they're 14 millimeter counterclockwise, which is pretty much the airsoft standard, most of the guns, there's a couple companies that do deviate from the 14 counterclockwise, the best way to fix this problem is to get yourself a barrel extension. Now this is kind of a long one, it's like almost a two incher here, but uh, you can pick them up that are super short. Almost every retailer sells them either individually or in a kit. I know even big companies like Mad Bull have them. A lot of the big retailers have them as house brands. So uh, your local shop's bound to carry it or can get them in. So what you'll want to do is take this, and this one actually is part of the 417. I'm just using it, I took it off because it actually does Believe it or not, the 417 has a little extension on it. Um, what you'll do is you'll take it, your threads will be all hosed here. Now this is a permanent fix, so be prepared, and it will add a little length to your airsoft gun. You're gonna put something in here to seal it up, like uh, let's say super glue, something epoxy, if you really wanna go hardcore on it, and then you're actually going to just put this on. Screw it all the way down, and that will give you new threads, new fresh threads. Now, like I said, it will add a little bit of length to your barrel, but not much, especially if you get the short ones that are like a little bit about an inch or even shorter than an inch, and it's not gonna add that much to the length of your airsoft gun. And it's a great and cheap fix, because otherwise you're looking at a brand new barrel, and uh, replacing your outer barrel could be kind of pricey. If you get like a decent one, you're looking at like 40 or 50 bucks even. It's kind of hard to find them affordably, but these little adapters are usually under $10. I think I've even seen on some on major retail sites like Evic or something like that have like a kit that's like their house brand, I think Matrix, and they're like $15 for like the three piece kit. Uh, so yeah, try that, put it on, and you should be fixed up just fine. Carson Evan writes, I was wondering for an upcoming outdoor game of Airsoft, are you able to play Airsoft outside while it's raining with AEGs? And if so, what amounts of rain like a drizzle or a downpour are safe to play in? So the short answer is yes, but it depends on the gun. So if you're looking at a standard AEG or a gas blowback pistol, gas blowback rifle, Springer, Springer rifles, shotgun, sniper rifle, you're pretty much fine. Uh, there's not gonna be any concerns there. Now, if you wander into a gun that has some sort of electronic control system, so now you're looking at things like, let's say, uh, the Amoeba line, uh, system of PTWs, anything with a MOSFET, then I would kind of weigh out your concerns because at that point, if you introduce water, especially in like really heavy downpours, into those electronic boards, you can cause some problems in those guns. You really can. Uh, but for a standard gun, not at all. I mean, I think you're fine. So kind of weigh that out. If you've got a gun with a MOSFET, if you've got a system of PTW, there's ways to waterproof them, by the way. There's some how-tos out there, uh, especially the system of PTWs. I know a lot of guys uh, do that, use like a waterproofing on the circuit boards and such. But um, if you have one of those, eh, probably not. I, I, you know, flip a coin. If it's just misting or raining, it's probably gonna be okay. But if it's raining, raining, you may wanna reconsider your gun. But if you have a standard AEG, like, you know, VFC, GMP, G&G, &G, whatever, you're gonna be totally fine out there. Yeah, just get out and go ahead and rock it and you're not gonna really have that much of an issue at all. The Man Cave writes, what do you think about the designated marksman role in Airsoft? Unnecessary, necessary, love the show. 
So I actually like the DMR, or Designated Marksman role, because it allows you to open up a little bit of extra. So a lot of fields that out there, larger fields, mainly outdoor, and then big milsim ops will implement a Designated Marksman role. For example, American milsim does. So what it does is it drives you to get a gun that shoots semi-automatic only. So it'll lock you to semi-auto only, and will normally allow you to have higher FPS. For example, at American milsim games, you can shoot 450 FPS with a .2 versus 400 with a .2 for your standard rifleman class. Now, in return, some places require you run something that shoots, you know, the, the 308 round or, you know, the, the, uh, the larger round you're going to run into, like 7.62. But, you know, if you're looking at uh, some fields, they'll just say, you know what, you have to run, like, mid-caps and you have to have, like, semi-auto only. Semi-auto seems to be the big restriction. So, with that, you get greater range. Typically, you get a minimum engagement distance, which I'm fine with because you're getting stronger power. You don't want to point blank someone with a high powered gun right up front and my field actually has DMR limits that are above the standard rifleman limits as well but it makes you play more strategically because it adds another role just like saws same thing I think it's great I think it should be added but it needs to be added sparingly not everybody can just run out and you'll have a whole squad or a whole platoon full of DMRs maybe one per squad or maybe a couple per platoon might be a good way to go to implement those you need to call them in for strategic help the same way you would with a support gunner or an M2 a three launcher. RT Airsoft writes, hey John, what are your thoughts on HPA bans and restrictions being put in place at fields across the country? Do you see them as biased because of other platforms also being able to achieve the high rate of fire FPS or semi-auto rate of fire, or do you see them as needed for the safety of the game? So yeah, it has been a hot topic, and this one's really bad. Uh, these guys right here, guns that have this little attachment, this is my personal Polar Star right here, uh, have been causing a lot of controversy lately. I mean, really big in the past couple months in Airsoft, and they've been really stirring up a lot of mess to the point where fields are outright banning them or restricting them, like segregating them off to go play with HPA owners only. Now take, for example, not to pick on a specific field, but I know for a fact that uh, Hollywood Sports Park out in California, the SC Viper, SC Village, that field, out there has now segregated HPA users from the AEG groups, meaning that if you're going to play in the AEG, kind of the general population, you need to have an AEG, but if you want to go play on the HPA only games, which they rotate, I think, every other game or every third game or something like that, then you either have to have HPA or you can bring your AEG. You just have to be willing to go up against the guys with HPA. To be honest, and not to poo-poo on them if somebody that works for, for Hollywood Sports Park to be watching and think I'm an idiot, I think it's terrible. I think it is horrible, but it is not this gun. This gun doesn't turn you into a douchebag. And the reason why I say douchebag is, I'm not gonna show you guys the video, but I'm sure you can find it. There are videos out there of people hosing people down with HPA guns, whether it be a Polar Star, uh, Wolverine, the SMPs, or a V12, incredibly high rates of fire, uh, just hosing guys down with box mags and automatic winding box mags on like an M4 like this. I think it is terrible. The problem is the player. Those players are despicable. I mean, there's one thing about using fire superiority. It's another thing about just overshooting someone. And some of these videos are bad. I mean, I'm talking, they give them like not just an extra burst, they get an extra 30, 40, 50 rounds. And that, one of those videos is what prompted Hollywood Sports Park to make the segregation rule. So the real problem is it's the players are taking advantage of fields not understanding how to chrono these. And if you guys don't know on Polar Stars, and I've actually got a review of this guy coming up soon, and you guys know I did a review of the V12 not too long ago. The problem is, the way an HPA gun works, it's one, it's easier, if you're a douchebag, to cheat. To, to turn that route, you know, that up. To turn, you know, go chrono and go thanks. Oh wait, you didn't, you know, you know, chrono tie my regulator. You didn't like tourney lock it. So, haha, -ha, I can go turn it up now. Uh, also, you can turn up the rate of fire to something insane. And that kind of makes it very unfair. Now, I understand at Airsoft, you can get an AEG with like dual sector gears that can shoot 30, 40, 50 rounds a second. But it's just a lot easier to do it with these guns and uh, a lot more effective. But I think, again, it goes back to the player. And I'm going to round up to that in a second. The other thing about these guns is something called jewel creep. And to give you a short version, I'm not gonna get into a physical lessons here, um, that if I go and take a, you know, this, my Polar Star, and I take an AEG and I put 0.2 gram BBs in it, and I shoot both of them at 400 feet per second through the chrono. So I do three shots, it's 400, and that's what the field limits are. So good, both of my guns, my AEG and my Polar Star, or HPA gun in this case, any HP, it's not just Polar Star, 
both are shooting within field limits when chrono with point twos. What happens is if I take my mag out and I load it full of point three twos, which is what I like to run actually is point three twos, then my polar star might drop to, let's say 340, but my AG might drop to 305 or 310. So what's happened there is you're going, wait a minute, they were both shooting the same at point two, and I'm just making these numbers up, I and mean, it may not be that drastic. You don't get the FPS drop off that's predictable like you do with an AEG, knowing, okay, well, if I'm shooting 400.2, I know if I go to a 0.28, I'm shooting like 336 or something like that. I think it's pretty close to the number uh, with a 0.28 gram BB. So give or take, I know if I put a 0.28 and I'm shooting that, I'll be close to 400 if I chrono with a 0.2. The same doesn't apply to this, the way uh, the, the physics, the way the whole gun works with a high pressure air HPA systems. So they don't have that predictable drop off. They drop off on a less of a curve. So what players are doing is they're going, okay, well, I'm going to go back and load it full of 0.4s. And what happens is now I've got a gun that might be shooting 325 with 0.4 gram BBs, which is the equivalent of dang near 500 feet per second on the field if you were to put a 0.2 in it. But if I put a 0.2 back in this gun, it'll still shoot 400. So it's not cheating by turning up the air, it's cheating by using a bigger BB. And players are taking advantage of that. And I'll be honest, I've been on the receiving end of that at the Hollywood Sports Park at SC Village before they implemented the segregation. Now, do I think the segregation is right and moving them over or banning them outright? Absolutely not. You've got to punish the player, not the tool. And these are idiot players. These are players that are intentionally doing, intentionally cheating. This is no different than not calling your hits. It's no different than getting a quick change spring system and changing springs out after you got chronoed. Anything like that, it's the same result. It's taking advantage of the rules. And I think it's an education to these fields that you need to be chronoing people with like 0.32s or 0.36s at a certain FPS. And then that way, if they put, want to put 0.2s in there, they're going to be fine. You're looking at uh, probably a little under the limits once you put a 0.2 in there. But if they want to use that heavier BB, which these HPA guns do love, then you actually get advantage, you know, take advantage of that. But again, you're not shooting at the energy, the muzzle velocity or the actual energy, which is called joules. So yeah, if you guys want to know more about jewel creep, and I know I've really drug on long about this, but I think it really is the douchebag players and not the guns. I, I really feel terrible that HPA guns are being banned or segregated because that is not the problem. That's not fixing the problem. That's pandering to a couple people that are breaking the rules but still letting them come play at your field. Uh, so kind of, I, I hope there's an education in here. I hope somebody maybe is watching uh, and maybe that's what you can implement if you own a field or you work at a field or play at a field to, uh, to really research jewel creep. Dig into it and start chronoing with really heavyweight BBs and understanding what the jewel would be for transfer back down to a conversion to a 0.2 and then you're gonna put everybody on that level playing field. And for overshooting, doesn't matter what you're shooting. If you're shooting 15 rounds a second, you can overshoot somebody. If you overshoot somebody, you're a douche bag too. You need to be out of this hobby all the way. So just my two cents. I know this was long. It's a super hot topic. I've been waiting for a big old rant to drop on this one. And that's my thoughts, but it's just my thoughts. I want to know what your thoughts are guys. Cause I know this one is, it's really hot. I've been blazed with these guns shooting 45, 50 a second, you know, and just hose down knowing these guys were running heavy BBs too. Um, I've been on the receiving end and I'll tell you what, it sucks. But I want to know what you guys think of it. Have you ever done it on the, the dishing out end? I doubt anybody will fess up to that in the comments. But have you ever been on the receiving end? And what are your thoughts about HPA guns, Polar Stars, Wolverines, uh, V12s in general? And does your field ban them? Let me know down in the comments below. Well, guys, that is it for questions this week. I know it was a big one, especially that big rant I had buried in there. Uh, had to get that one off my chest. It was a great question. I've been waiting to try to get that. But now it is time for the video recommendation of the week. And this is going to kind of balance that out. Really lighthearted. It's a fun watch. A little longer video, about as long as one of these, about 12, 13 minutes, but uh, really well produced. And I love the stuff that is coming out of these Bernie X guys. But this one is Airsoft versus Nerf. And they really kind of laid this out as like a, a little short skit uh, following kind of the parents and their younger children and the airsoft and, and Nerf and how they end up kind of uh, through a story uh, intertwining on the battlefield. And they even kind 
kind of poke fun at some one of my biggest issues. I started watching this. I was like, hey, wait a minute, this is kind of a bad thing. But I was like, oh, wait a minute, they did cover it at the end. So uh, I kind of like how they uh, even made fun of themselves a bit there. But they're always good. These guys know humor, and it's so great to watch. I love this stuff, and this one is no exception. So if you haven't watched it, because I'm sure there's like I think a ton of views on this thing, like it's in the millions or something at this point. So chances are you've probably seen it, but you haven't seen it, definitely check it out or give it another watch. It's actually really good. It's uh, Airsoft versus Nerf by Bernie X, and I'll have a link in the description below. Well, guys, as always, thank you so much for joining me here on Mondays. And as always, remember, it's easy to get your question on the show. All you gotta do is just put it in the comment section below, vote up your favorites, and I'll get them on the next show. Also, don't be discouraged. I get a ton of questions down there, a ton of really, really good ones. So if you don't get yours on the next show, just be persistent, keep putting it down there in the next Monday show. So just kind of keep repeating it. I do pay attention and I do read every single question. I mean, top to bottom. So let it be known if you guys are writing it, I'm reading it. And if I see it enough, I'll definitely get it on the next show. Also, guys, I know a lot of controversy in the past couple weeks about, you know, the HPA and younger players and a lot of stuff stirring up. It usually seems to happen at the beginning of summer, but uh, we're going to level out to some less controversial stuff here, hopefully coming soon. But I do want to hear your questions, controversial or not, put them down there in the comments. Also, guys, I do have something coming next week. Uh, I've got some news. I know you guys have been waiting and you've been asking for this, and I, I'll tell you what it is. It's something involving patches, but different. So stay tuned on that. That'll be next week. It'll be my big announcement. But since you guys come here every Monday, I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys first about what was going on. Give you a little teaser on that. And I can tell you everything, but you get a teaser because you get to come here first and you guys watch the Monday show every week. But again, guys, thank you so much. Stay tuned for a ton of reviews this week. I've got to get to editing this and then a bunch of other ones right after this and uh, get this up today before it's too late and you guys kill me in the comments below. But again, thanks so much. I'll see you next week. But until then, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.